Well, good afternoon, everybody. Greg Buckley here from Buckley's Auto Care. And today, it is a day off, but I'm up here servicing a car, and it's hot, right? And you can see, I'm proof. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's hot, and it's hot everywhere right now. We've got out west over 100 degrees constantly, and here in the east, we've got up to 100 degrees with high humidity. But no matter how you shake the tree, it's hot, and this brings to uh, to your attention, I'll bring your attention things that are affected by heat. So I got my cast of characters here today, and um, that's we have the AC compressor, which is like right here, okay. And then we have Mr. Alternator, right, right. So spin in here, and over here we've got the water pump, and then right below me here is a hub bearing. All right. So what are we going to talk about today? Fatigue. Each one of these components is what we call a rotational part, right? Because it spins, it moves. This is rotational electric, and so is the alternator uh, engine. And of course, we've got wheels, chassis, hubs, bearings, tires, wheels, everything spins. Okay, so during the heat, like most of us are experiencing right now, it is really traumatic on all components, uh, but even more so on everything that rotates. Of course, rotation creates heat. And that's what has to be dissipated in order to keep the, these units here functioning as properly uh, as we possibly can. So, you know, any kind of air restriction, um, you know, airflow across the engine and through the engine bay, the compartment, all of that is very critical to the performance and uh, longevity of these units. So let's start with uh, the alternator. All right, so the alternator, as you can see, we're going to rotate and it has, a, it, it'll eventually wear out. Now, Everything we see here, you can't predict when or how, and you can do your best to try to maintain it. As for the alternator, all right, best thing that we can do tell you is keep your battery charged or keep a, a, a good long life battery and keep it full, keep it charged after four years. Uh, replace it, even though it can say five or maybe six years. Don't go all the way to the max and don't extend it. Why? Because as that battery is depleting, this unit has to continue charging and replenishing it. So it actually has to work harder. When it's not working, it can just freely spin and not really you know, overload itself. When you put it to work, that's when it starts to you know, create a lot more energy, uh, put a lot more drag on the, uh, on the engine itself. So why make it work harder when, you can, when your battery can have a constant state of charge um, for your vehicle and all your use. And again, most of the time, you'll see a bearing that will go out on here. Um, all the components will go, uh, windings, stator, all of that will go and fail. Who can predict it? Nobody really, but after five, seven years, there's a good probability that, one, that it will fail and it will have to be replaced. So again, um, best you can do is keep a good belt tensioner, number one, uh, keep a good healthy belt and most importantly keep a good battery in place very very important um, next up your ac system okay now i want you to look real closely do you see the green dye around the around the edges here okay there's a seal in there and this is uh, this is probably a gm unit i guess it's pretty common but this is your clutch okay or your pulley there's your clutch these engage in order to make the compressor work to turn this compressor and this compressor is just Let's think of it as a small engine, because it really is, right? So it's, most have pistons, and it'll operate accordingly. Now, where you see the leak at, what's leaking out is refrigerant. Well, along with the refrigerant is oil. And the oil is what maintains the integrity of this compressor slash mini motor. And once you run out of oil, or low on oil, like anything else, you start to overheat the components and that's when a breakdown will occur. Now, it's always best to, when you have a leak, or if you're low on charge, uh, let's put it this way. If you're low on charge, you have a leak. End of story. At some point, it's gonna expose itself a little bit quicker uh, than most, but if you do need to charge, there's a leak somewhere, and it can take a few times, it can take a, a little while to find it, uh, even in the smallest capacities, and it's getting harder and harder to do that. But, you know, tools and equipment come around and, you know, we have the ability to kind of sniff where the, where the problem is. In any case, uh, once the system is completely discharged, 
and out, you have no AC. So you have to refill it, inspect, include the oil, and test, and hopefully find the answer. But at some point, the compressor is going to seize or to wear out. You can help by, if there is a leak at any point uh, between beginning and failure, if you can keep the system 100% full capacity and operating accordingly, your, your chances of having the compressor give you a long life is a lot better. So just keep that in mind. And like I said though, eventually all of these components are gonna fail. You're not gonna get away with it if you go over at least, let's say 10 years of the vehicle. Um, so, you know, some people get lucky, no, there's no question. But in general, these are workhorses. They really are the alternator and your AC compressor because they're working almost 99% of the time in either keeping you comfortable uh, in your cabin or keeping your vehicle charged and ready for you to use all of your accessories. And actually with electro uh, electronics today, it's, it's, it's a workhorse. All right, so let's get down to hub bearings. Now, this is your, right, typical, there's your studs. This is your wheel, your tire and rim go here. Your vehicle rides on these bearings and you can see where the bearing has failed in this manner here. So well, we, we call this area the hub area. All right, and this is what the bearing rides on. These bearings are encapsulated, meaning they're sealed. And not like old times where you could ma maintain them, service them, and get them back on the road fresh and ready to go. You, you can't do that anymore, or maybe, maybe some heavy duty models you can, but un unfortunately for most vehicles today, they're sealed, they're sealed units. So at some point, they are going to go, they are going to fail. And maybe you experience a, a noise when you're turning, you may hear like an airplane sound, um, whatever the case might be, a wobble, uh, a pulsation, which, you know, a lot of people relate to brake pulse, but it starts typically at the hub, at the area here, because one little degree out from this unit, when these start to wear, they give you a little bit of a wobble. You know, you can't detect it, but eventually that starts to magnify itself as you extend out to the rotors and brakes. So at some point they will go as well. Again, heat is really, really harsh. Remember, you got road heat at 200 miles an hour or 200 degrees in some cases, um, and it gets cooled again, but you know, uh, over time, these units are gonna fail. Water pump. Okay, and that's a big that's a big water pump right here. Okay, here. All right, so there's our pump. Now, of course, very easy. What it does, it turns water. Excuse me, it turns coolant. My apologies. So it changes the coolant. It, tur it turns the coolant right because it's got propellers inside that uh, in inside the pump unit. And as that goes. Um, so does the cooling system and the efficiency in the cooling system. Now, how can you maintain the pump? Well, again, keeping good pressure, good, good tension on, on the unit so that it spins in a, in a consistent manner that none of the other pulleys are creating a, a, a wobbling effect, uh, causing more pressure on all of the pulley systems. If one pulley is out, maybe an idler pulley or an accessory pulley, it starts to vibrate and then that creates additional pressures and uneven performance on all the others. So you wanna keep an eye out where your professional wants to make that happen. And as you can see, it's getting hot in here, right? So, and we don't need Nelly to tell you that. So anyway, um, some of the things that goes on, again, eventually all of these components will have to be replaced. However, in the heat that we're all experiencing, uh, this is a, uh, a pretty, you know, pretty common situation. And you know you just got to be uh, kept on top of things, and that's where you go to a professional. You can have it once your car is in for service. Uh, take your professional go over it. Um, a good inspection is very critical in times like this to make sure that you know, if you're going to go on the road, you want to make sure that these components are healthy. But in any case, everybody needs to be prepared for at some point. These things that go round and round and round, they're going to go and they're not gonna go around anymore. They're gonna to need to be replaced and repaired and uh, taken care of. So you can keep going, all right? Well, look, it's hot. <laughs> I'm gonna get back to servicing my own personal vehicle today, but uh, I, appreciate, I appreciate everything. Thank you very much. Greg Buckley, Buckley's Auto Care. Have yourself a great afternoon. Stay safe, drive safe, drive smart.
We'll talk to you next time. See you.